great this this is probably the most played guitar riff of all time it is of course smoke on the water by deep purple uh, I mean what a tune now I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it I'll show you as close as I can to the original version and give you some tips on kind of getting the sound right and stuff uh, but it can also be played pretty simple uh, one thing I do notice is a lot of people learn the main riff and don't learn the rest of the song which is crazy because the rest of the song isn't very difficult at all so uh, I would advise you after you've finished learning the main kind of riff thing that you check that out as well because it's kind of fun to play and it's not tricky so the main riff this one <laughs> Now, big deal with this one is to use your fingers to play the notes instead of a pick. I am holding a pick, but I'm using my second and third fingers on my picking hand to pick the notes out together. There's a few interviews with Richie where he talks about it, uh, Richie Blackmore, of course, uh, and uh, it's, it's kind of, it makes quite a difference to the sound. It also keeps it kind of clean, right? So that would be what I'd recommend for all of that time when you're playing those two notes in the, in the main riff and in the chorus, I'd be using your fingers for that, fingers two and three, that way you can also hold on to the pick at the same time and be ready for the next part. So uh, let's go to a close up and I'll show you the fingering for that, uh, the main riff. <laughs> riff. Okay, so you can see here the big deal is I'm using my third and fourth fingers here on the fifth and fourth strings at the fifth fret. Now a lot of people tend to play that open. But the open strings have got a kind of funny sound, so it's definitely sounds kind of darker and fatter using the fretted notes. So I definitely recommend fifth fret, fifth fret on the fifth and fourth strings and use your third and fourth finger. Don't just use a bar, it'll be too easy to hit some, you know, get other notes ringing out. So just use the third and fourth. Now we've got a bar using our first finger and just being careful to only play those middle two strings. Remember that you should be using your fingers, these two fingers, to pick the notes like that. So you shouldn't have too much trouble making sure that they're the only notes that you get. So. Now those, you're still using fingers three and four at the fifth fret. Second time. So it's just exactly the same thing, but we're going up here to the sixth fret and then to the fifth fret. Third time. We just go up and down. Back to the first finger and back to those thicker strings. Now to make sure you kind of get the right sound, you want to have a good listen to the original recording because it's not all held. If you go... It doesn't sound right. It's... So it's, they're kind of shorter, so you press, and then re by relaxing your fingers, you'll get the notes to stop. So that's, that way it's kind of keeping it nice and tight. But the best way to do that is to listen to the original recording and make sure that yours sounds the same. Okay, the count. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four. OK, 
Okay, make sure that you understand the rhythm there as well. If you're struggling with it, make sure you count along. So uh, that should be enough for the main riff. Let's move on to the verse. So the verse is using a G and an F power chord. That's it. And what we're doing is playing a little arpeggio. So we're playing sixth string, fifth string, fourth string. And it's important to mute it after that. So. One and two, mute, three and four, mute, one and two, mute, three and four, mute. Okay, so it's worth practicing doing that. Mute, one and two, mute, three and four, mute. Okay, now when it goes to the F, it goes down. Okay, so it's starting on the fourth string. That's the riff for the verses. G, 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 F, G. To make records with a mobile, we didn't have much time. You can see in between the chords, I just kind of relaxing my hand, my fingers, they're staying in the position. We don't want to kind of lift them right off, but then relaxing the pressure there, and that's what kind of makes the mute happen. So that's the verses, that's all it is. Just that same pattern repeated four times. The chorus is using a C power chord, an A flat power chord, and then a riff using similar notes to the little intro thing. So we're starting off with a C power chord, that's nothing on the thickest, and then three, five, five. <laughs> A flat, which is uh, moving over the power chord shape to the sixth string, four, six, six. Okay, and what we're doing is we play each note on the beat. So we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then this riff. So this is using the same two notes that started off our main riff. And then the same notes as the second note of our riff, which is the uh, little bar at the third fret, middle two strings. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. So just on beat four there of the, the second time through, it's going down here to these two notes in the third fret on the fifth and fourth string. I'm just using my first finger bar. So one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four. C to A flat. That's the whole chorus. So one more time. close up I'll show you a little kind of a clever clog thing that you might want to check out if you like. Uh, I used to play this tune in a kind of an acoustic duo and I used to do uh, do this to it. So once you've played the riff the bass comes in going doing continuous notes there. Now if you're using your fingers to pick the main riff you can use your thumb to play that bass note and do them both at the same time. It takes a bit of practice, but you can have... fattens it up a bit, it's kind of a fun thing to do. So that would be the kind of harder end of the spectrum. The easiest one would be... <laughs> you 
could just use one finger if you like and move it up and down on those middle two strings. But that, uh, you know, incorporating the bass line thing is a fun thing for more advanced players. I'm sure you're going to have a whole lot of fun playing this tune. It really is probably one of the biggest guitar riffs of all time and definitely worth uh, having in your repertoire. Um, you know, if you're going to try and do it properly, just like the record, you're going to have to listen to the original recording a bunch of times because it's not just kind of the right notes and the right place, it's kind of getting the feel of it right, you know. And uh, for a simple riff like this, that's what it's all about, I reckon. You know, it's worth, uh, you know, putting that time in to really nail it rather than just kind of half being able to play it, you know. It's not a hard one to get really good as well. And, and, and in the process of kind of learning to really ace stuff, It'll kind of make all of your playing better because that stuff will rub off on everything else that you learn. So I uh, highly recommend you doing that. Uh, I'll see you for plenty more lessons and songs and stuff very soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.